Have any of you guys ever felt like giving up on your dream? That was me over eight years ago. At that time, I was living in my car, working three jobs, and I still couldn't make ends meet. But today, nearly a decade later, life is better than ever. How did I turn my life around so quickly in just a matter of months? In this video, I'm gonna share exactly how I learned to code in just three months and landed a job. And if anyone out there is feeling hopeless, this story is for you. Quickly before I dive into this, I want y'all to know that yes, I did become a developer in three months, but does that mean it's normal? No, it's not. Learning to code in three months and securing a job in three months can be totally different things. People know me as the guy who became a dev in three months, but my first attempt at learning how to code, I don't share this often, I gave up. I gave up learning how to code. When I tried it, I just figured why not give it a try? I saw a video on YouTube and a video of Bill Gates, Chris Bosch, well, I am telling people like me that you don't need to be smart to be a developer. When I heard that, I'm like, damn, this might work for me. So I tried it and it was harder than I realized. I gave up. I tried it and I gave up for about three to four months. But after three to four months after giving up, I was still in the same position. I was still working three jobs. I was still struggling. I had no great health insurance. I was stuck with Obamacare health insurance and I couldn't get the best insurance because it was so expensive. And then. I told myself, Chris, if you don't make a change in your life, you'll be exactly where you are. So that's when I told myself to learn code again. But that wasn't even the final thing that pushed me. I remember during this time when I had no money to bank, I had to call my mom and ask for money. And I was so embarrassed to do this because at this time, my mom barely had enough money to eat with my stepdad at the time. And I realized if they barely had enough money to eat, what does that mean for me? That means they'll be homeless eventually too if I don't do something to help them. What if there was a a pandemic that came up right what if the world went down the drain and then they had no more money for food and rent and they had to be homeless like me i couldn't let that happen because of that situation i was pushed harder than ever to make sure that my mom never has to live in a car like me my mom never has to be homeless i don't want my mom to go through that situation and how do i prevent that is by making sure that i do something about it i failed at being an electrician I failed college four times, four times I dropped out. I tried being a registered nurse two times. It didn't work out. I failed at everything and there was only one path in front of me that I knew of because I didn't know anyone else successful in my family except for those who went to medical school. I thought that was the only way. And, and the path in front of me was engineering. It was learning how to code because someone said it's possible. And so I told myself, damn, then I have no choice. I have to do this since coding seems like the only way I have to do whatever it takes, even if it takes two years. I remember thinking, believing it would take two years, more than two years at this time to get a job in tech. But that was my key motivator. My key motivator was just, I need to get a job as soon as possible. Yes, but I knew it would take time. And so my goal wasn't to get a job as fast as possible. It was to be proactive as possible, right? Extremely important. After finding a drive to overcome my challenges, I realized that having the right resources and tools is crucial in this journey. And speaking of tools, let's take a brief moment to talk about a game changer for any developer, which is Jan.dev. As developers, we often face a challenge of deciphering vague bug reports. You know the drill. A simple text description, no screenshot, no logs, and you're left playing detective. But that's where Jan.dev comes in. It's a game changer with developer-friendly bug reports in just one click, which is used by the way by over 60,000 people, Jam.dev is a free tool that eliminates the frustration of incomplete bug reports. It automatically includes a video of the bug, console logs, network requests, and all crucial debugging info like, for example, internet speed. And the best part, it's a simple Chrome extension. And when your team spots a bug, they just click and Jam.dev instantly creates a detailed ticket in your issue tracker. No more lengthy calls or endless common threads. If you want to focus more on coding and less on tracking down bugs, Jam.dev is for you. Get your team on board and streamline your debugging process and check it out at Jam.dev slash Chris to get started. When I finally motivated myself push myself harder than ever to really make a change in my life, I had to find a resource. I found this tutorial, but tutorials aren't easy. And also they're expensive. The one I had, I was paying around 50 bucks a month. And that was great, but it was hard. 
It was really hard, but don't make the mistake I made. I learned code well, but not well enough. One thing I want to share is that when I was using tutorials and learning how to code, I became too dependent on tutorials. Honestly, the first one or two years of my career, I, to be honest, because I didn't have a senior developer that was mentoring me, this company I was working at, not even my second company, no one was mentoring me. And so the only way I mentored myself was tutorials. And that was terrible of me. And so I highly recommend that what comes to learning code you don't just stick to tutorial. Like for example, you take a tutorial once, you take an HTML, CSS tutorial, take it once, then only use documentation, only use Stack Overflow, only use ChatGPT. Don't use ChatGPT to cheat when building things, but use it to give you advice and help you debug things, right? When you go to JavaScript, take a JavaScript tutorial once and that's it. Take a React tutorial once and that's it. And to be quite frank, I highly recommend not even using tutorials at all and just do your own thing. Like I'm working on my own tutorials. Right, I'm selling these courses. It won't come out till January, but the whole point of my course and it, the website's called neverlearnagain.com. It's not live yet, but my goal is to make sure you never use a tutorial again. You pay for this course and that's it. That's my goal because I don't want people to go through what I went through. But when you learn how to code, make sure you go through the right resource. Make sure you learn the right things as well. And so I do have a video on uh, uh, the roadmap to web development. I'll put that link in the description below. I hope that helps you out. But what happened next? When I was learning how to code, I was working three jobs, everyone. <laughs> I was working three jobs and that was hard because I was working three jobs. I was working 60 to 70 hours a week. I was going to a lot of Bible studies at this time, teaching Bible studies. That's almost every single night to be honest. And so the only time I was able to learn code was during work or on the weekends. And by the way, I didn't even own a laptop. I had to borrow a laptop from a friend during that time just to learn how to code. Or if that laptop wasn't available, I went to the library to learn how to code. Meaning I used a computer to browse the web to go on these websites to code. That's how desperate I was. And I think that's the mindset that everyone needs to have when learning, where you don't allow excuses to stop you because this is going to be very difficult, everyone. The hardest thing you ever do in your life for your career, right, career-wise. And so I didn't allow any excuses. And then while learning how to cope, this is two months in, I'm talking to myself and I'm like looking at jobs and I'm looking at jobs because I want to see what salaries they offer. And as I'm looking at these jobs that are available on Indeed.com, I think it was Monster, is it called Monster.com? LinkedIn, LinkedIn wasn't as popular back then for jobs. It was mainly Indeed and there was another website. I forgot the name of it. And I saw that there were so many jobs available. Not a lot of junior positions even back then, just like now, but now there's even lesser. But then I, I told myself, wait, wait, wait. When looking at these jobs, these jobs, if I don't apply to them now, will no longer be available in two to three months, probably one month. So if I don't apply to this job now, I realize what do I have to lose? The only thing I have to lose is no one responds to me, which they probably won't. But if I apply, what if they do? And so I, I told myself two months in, you know what? I'm gonna apply to these jobs anyway. I need to make my portfolio first two months in, build a project. And I, I just had one website, which is a landing page. And I told myself, I'm gonna build this landing page. And I did over the weekend. And I told myself to apply to five, three to five jobs a day, every single day during work, by the way. <laughs> and actually I almost got fired from that job. And I'll mention that later. I'll talk about this later. And so I started applying to jobs every single day. And of course, I mean, you apply to any job if you can't find anything relatable to you. But when I saw a job description that's, that showed, oh, maybe I have a potential for this role. I applied to that especially. But what I want to focus on and share with y'all is that that's what it takes. I hear people tell me, Chris, I applied to a thousand jobs over one year and not even one person responded to me. And do you think that's your fault? Do you think it's their fault? It doesn't matter whose fault it is. No one's required to hire you at all, right? And so then thinking about it, if no one's required to hire you, that means you have to make it where they have to interview you or else they're missing out. You have to do whatever it takes. And one of those things is persistence. Applying continuously, even when no one interviews you for a year, guess what? It's gonna take you one or two years to get a job anyway. In this world we live in now and with this economy, I was expecting it would take me one or two years, seven years ago. What makes you think it'll be easier now when there are more people learning code than ever? It's not easy. And so I did that, right? I started applying every single day. I built my portfolio. And after applying to jobs for one month, someone hired me. Now, does the exact same thing apply today? No, it's totally different. Your portfolio needs to stand out. If your portfolio looks like everyone else's, you have the same portfolio from every single tutorial, the same portfolio from Free Code Camp like everyone else, from Udemy, from Zero to Mastery, you name it from Code Academy, from front end ma mentors, everyone has the exact same portfolio. Why would you stand out? You have to do whatever it takes to stand out. So what if it takes a year? So what if it takes two years? I have a homie who is in his 40s at 42 years old, he learned how to code, didn't get a job until he was 44 years old as a software engineer. 
only got a job at FedEx, by the way. And so I'm so fortunate that I was able to do that. Now, can you do it as well in three months? No. In this economy, I mean, maybe if you're super, super, super intelligent, like out of this world, maybe if your brain is chat GPT, but realistically speaking, I'll take you one or two years. Anyway, that's how I became a dev in three months. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all next one.